Hello everyone, how's it going and welcome to today's Wild Rift video. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the tier list for Wild Rift for patch 2.6a. But I'm doing it a bit differently this time. This time we're going to look through every single role in the game. I'm going to use a website that I work with the guys over at Mobifier. Um, it's a website called Wild Rift Fire. You can have a look at all sorts of champion builds, guides, rundowns, and everything on this website, including new champions like Kale and Morgana that just came out as well. So I'll leave the link down in the description for that one if you want to check it out. But we're not talking about that. We're going to be talking about the tier list itself. This is for all the roles. And first up, we have the Baron Lane. Now, with the Baron Lane, there were a few changes coming into 2.6a. More importantly, to champions like Fiora, Camille, and also Jarvan, who is down here. But I feel like the, the meta hasn't really changed too much since patch 2.6 as well. Fiora, still really, really strong. Powerful in laning phase and powerful at split pushing as well in the late game. And just... Really, really strong overall. The only thing that got nerfed with her was her second ability. The cooldown got increased, but most of the time you don't want to spam this ability during laning phase anyway. Most of the time you want to keep it until, you know, any sort of crowd control comes towards you. Or any sort of ability in general comes towards you. Same with Camille as well. Still insanely strong in lane. Still really, really good in team fights as well with her Hextech ultimatum, her ultimate. And just a really, really strong pick overall. Uh, I believe the nerf was to her passive, if I remember. The cooldown went up, so... Giving the enemy a bit more time to try and counter the uh, Camille, but, you know, it's still really, really strong champion. You just have to play around your passive a lot more now if you do play Camille. So at times you might have to play a little bit more passive, but the champion still does true damage. Still offers so much in the laning phase and also in team fights as well. And the other one is Jace. Now, Jace didn't get touched at all in patch 2.6a, which is very, very surprising. He's insanely strong right now. You can go various different builds as well. You can go for like a lethality build if you want to. Or you can go a more tanky build with like Sterix Gauge, Death Dance and Black Cleaver. Poke is really, really strong. Not as strong as maybe PC League, but still really strong in general. Hammer form as well, really strong. You can just jump into the enemies and pretty much just one-shot them off the face of the map. So as a champion, really, really strong. And definitely one that I would definitely uh, recommend you all to pick up in the top lane. Probably one of the best at the moment. Uh, just to clarify as well that these... Um, these champions are not in any order from left to right. It's just they're all in one tier, basically. So, they, you know, they can be better than others. And some champions will be better than others. Obviously, my opinion is uh, probably going to be different to others. But if you have any suggestions or anything, uh, let me know down in the comments. And also, if there's a champion that you think I'm missing in this tier list, let me know. And I'll add them into this tier list as well. Or I'll give you a comment just to let you know where I would put them in the tier list. Moving on. Riven, S tier. Still really, really strong. A champion got nerfed um, a few patches ago, but still really, really strong. Just a lot of mobility, a lot of damage as well. And could definitely snowball if she gets ahead. The same with Darius as well. Very, very snowball champion. You know, with the apprehend, being able to get the resets as well with his ultimate. Really, really strong champion overall. Can struggle a little bit um, at times if you're against a team against a team comp that has a lot of disengage, like Gragas, Janna, because he doesn't really have any sort of dash or anything like Riven or Irelia or even Renekton. But the champion overall is still really, really strong. Irelia as well, um, still really, really strong. Got a nerf in patch 2.6, but it's only to her passive, so she is strong overall. Probably one of the most difficult top lane champions to play because you have to make sure you reset your first ability all the time when you last hit minions or when you try and jump onto a champion as well. You need to make sure you have a mark on them. But if you understand how to play Irelia and if you understand what she does, then she could be really, really strong. Renekton has gone down a little bit. He did get nerfed in patch 2.6a. He's just getting a bit overrun at the moment by other champions like Camille, like Fiora, and like Jace. Uh, I can't remember exactly what the nerfs were. I think it was to his uh, second ability and also I think it was his AD per level or something like that. I can't remember exactly, but it was something like that. Um, so overall, the damage has gone down uh, for Renekton. Also, the cooldown's gone up on the second ability. And just overall, the champion has definitely been... You know, decreasing a little bit. Still really, really strong, don't get me wrong. Blade of the Rune King, Black Cleaver on Renekton is still a great combo. And can still be really, really good. Akali is slowly rising back up. She is becoming to be scary again. But at the moment, these AD top laners are just running over the whole meta at the moment. You know, everyone above Akali at the moment is just really, really strong. Same with Gragas as well. Obviously, everyone above is an AD champion. Gragas is AP, so it's just... 
the AD champion is just doing really strong. The, you know, there's a couple of builds you can go with Gragas. You can go the Rod of Ages AP build, or you can go for a full tank Gragas build as well, depending on, depending on obviously what, you know, what team composition you have and what you actually want in the game. Um, Akali as well, you know, still that scary assassin, but she does struggle a lot during the laning phase now because they changed her a few patches ago to make her really, really weak in the laning phase, but she can still scale up if you don't feed early on and you can still carry a lot of team fights. Wukong still in and about the top lane as well. Obviously, he's been moved from the jungle to the top lane. Still does work really well in the jungle, but a lot better as a top laner now because you do get that extra healing from your first ability and also you have, you know, great you know, great peeling potential and also great engage potential as well onto the top lane or even in team fights as well. And you can play very safe as well with your clones. So it'd be really, really nice. Malphite, still a big tank in the top lane, still can offer so much. You can go for a full AP Malphite build if you feel really ballsy, or you can go for a, a full tank Malphite build as well. Both work really, really well. Garen as well, big tank. A big pain to deal with, to be fair. You know, if a Garen can get heads and if he can build full tank, he kind of becomes unkillable for AD carry mains like myself. So he can be really, really hard to uh, play against. But you have to make sure you just deny Garen as much as possible. But when Garen does scale and when Garen does get into late game, he kind of comes a bit unkillable. And he is a bit hard to kill at times as well. Same with Malphite, to be fair. And also the ultimate as well for Garen, pretty much being an execution ultimate as well, is uh, really, really powerful. Obviously, Dr. Mundo, since the rework, is kind of trying to find his way in a meta at the moment. The thing is, is that... Most of the time, Dr. Mundo does well against a lot of crowd control champions and mainly against um, AP champions as well because of his healing that he does over time. But at the moment, as mentioned, you know, all these AD champions are really, really strong in the top lane at the moment. So he is struggling a little bit to try and find himself in the meta, but he's still quite strong. You can build him full tank as well and he'll still be really, really good. Kale. Now, I'm not too sure if Kale is going to be A plus or S tier. I have to still test kale out since obviously the nerfs they nerfed him a lot during the uh, her a lot sorry during the laning phase but didn't really nerf her during the late game so if you can survive during the early game if you can scale up into late game she can be still really really strong but i'm not too sure if he, she's a plus or a um a plus or s tier yeah i'll have to still test test her but i've put her down into a plus tier for now as before i put her in ss plus tier but since the nerfs i put her down in a plus at the moment um jack's still really really strong in the um in the game you know more of the late game champion that needs to scale a lot into the late game can struggle a bit in the early game against champions like Fiora and Camille that could definitely win out early on. But if you can get ahead with Jax, if you can scale into late game, get the Blade Rune King, get the Trinity Force as well. He becomes one of the best late game champions, but it's just getting there, which is the problem for Jax. Joven obviously got quite a big nerf. Base AD went down and also the first ability damage went down as well. This is because top lane Joven was really, really strong with summon Airy. So before I put him as like S or A+, but now I've just moved him down to the A tier for now. So I have to test him out a little bit. He'll still probably be completely fine in top lane, but he's just not going to do as much damage as before. Pantheon's still really, really strong as well. <clears throat> Obviously, the Grand Sky 4 is a great ultimate to use, um, especially during team fights as well, and you can roam a lot quicker than the top lane, top lane of the you're against. Um, still has a few struggling matchups as well, can still be, you know, caught out in the early game, doesn't really have a lot of mobi mobility as well, but if you can get the Protobel early on, if you could join the team fights with your Grand Sky 4, you can use your second ability, use that stun to help during the team fights. Graves got nerfed for nerfed a few patches ago as well in patch 2.6. The uh, crit rate uh, went down, uh, not the crit rate, sorry, the uh, crit multiplier went down and also the cooldown went up on the third ability. But I still think the champion is fine. You could definitely move up the tiers as well if you understand how to play Graves. And you could definitely punish uh, champions champions early on with the amount of damage output that he does. And he does obviously scale a little bit into late game as well. If you've got like Bloodthirster, Solari Charge Blade, your third ability goes on quite a low cooldown. So it can be quite nice. Kennen is a little bit struggling at the moment. They did change Kennen a little bit. They made him a bit weaker in the early game, but a little bit stronger in the late game with the first ability, but nerfed other areas as well. So struggling a little bit, to be fair. Uh, as mentioned, you know, AP champions are not really a popular thing at the moment in the top lane or even the mid lane as well. Um, so yeah, unfortunately... Kenner will be sitting there for now. And the same with Trendemir. Trendemir, obviously, you know, one of the best late game champions. Again, it's just trying to get to the late game. And with so many, you know, so much crowd control in the game at the moment. And with so much peeling potential. Especially with supports like Rakan, like Thresh, 
um, like Nami and Lulu and even Janna as well. It's so hard for Trainer Mid to try and jump onto the back line and even junglers as well. You know, some of the junglers can do really, really well against Trendemir. Mir. Uh, Singed, I probably put a little bit too low, to be fair. Uh, I think Singed could definitely be a lot higher. Um, again, AP Champion's not really that strong in the top lane, but he can still be pretty annoying at times. He can still go around the whole team with the uh, Red Eyes uh, Crystal Scepter, for example, and just slow the whole team. But, I mean, the whole enemy team, but... You know, at times he can struggle a lot. Obviously, Nasus is down there. And Teemo... <coughs> Teemo is all the way down in D tier because who likes Teemo anyway? And Nasus, obviously, just doesn't scale as fast as the others and just kind of struggles again against all the pill um, that supports and junglers and even mid laners have as well. Uh, moving on to jungle. Lee Sin and Karzik's up there as two of the best. Somehow, Lee Sin got a buff. I still had him S plus tier even before the buffs as well. So, I'm not too sure why they buffed him. But he is still really, really strong. A lot of outplay potential. Obviously, his kick as well does 25 more damage now, which is a bit crazy. Karzik's still up there as well as one of the best junglers. Just being able to evolve, being able to turn invisible and also isolate the enemies as well. Just doing a lot of single target damage is really, really nice. Nunu's still up there even after the nurse in patch 2.6. It was only to his first ability. Um, um, that this big snowball champion can still do really, really well. Can still gank multiple lanes at multiple times. It's still really, really good. Evelyn is still up there as well. Just a really annoying champion to deal with. Uh, probably can struggle a little bit. Maybe Evelyn can move down to the 8 plus tier because she's not as strong as the other champions in this tier list. But she just can be really, really annoying because people don't really know. Uh, people don't really understand how to play against her invisibility. And obviously, we know Pink Ward's in the game at the moment, um, and no way to actually find out where Evelyn is on the map unless you use the Scry Knob. It can be hard to kind of track Evelyn at times. You can use this to your advantage to try and get an early um, advantage in the game. Olaf obviously got a buff as well in patch 2.6a. Olaf is still really, really nice. You can go for various different builds for Olaf. You can go for a tank build if Death Stance, or you can go for the more damage orientated build with like Trinity force as well depending on what you want and then you have riven jason fiora all these three champions are not really your typical junglers but they are rising quite heavily in wild rift obviously in wild rift it's much easier to take down the jungle camps you know dueling potential in the um at the uh, Rift Scotlers early on is really, really important. All these three champions do really, really well. And all these three champions work well in team fights and also in the late game as well. Especially Jace and Fiora. Riven, not so much, but still with her, you know, high mobility, she can work around the jungle really, really quickly and clear the end, uh, clear the jungle really, really fast. Rengar, still quite annoying with his invisibility, but I'm not as strong as before. His build is a bit all over the place at the moment. Some people build him crit, some people build him lethality. I feel like still... People really don't know where he's standing at the moment, but he is still doing pretty well, to be fair. He can still be uh, one of the best junglers and can still use his ultimate to great effect. But again, as mentioned before, because of, you know, all this peeling that's in the game at the moment, all the crowd control, if Rengar is put in place and if you don't use the right evolve at the right moment or the right empowered ability at the right moment, then you can be stuck and you can pretty much get 100 to 0 really, really quickly. Um, Camille, obviously a long, long time ago, got nerfed in the jungle, but I still feel like this champion's really strong. Big shout out to Chief. He's been doing really, really well on Camille. He's a challenger jungle if you want to check jungler, if you want to check him out on uh, on Twitch. Hopefully he's doing his YouTube channel soon as well. Uh, but yeah, Camille can still do a lot. Obviously, the Hextech Ultimatum is still really, really strong. The Hookshot being able to gank pretty easily as well. The champion can still work. It's not going to be as strong as before, but it can still work and it can still be really, really strong. Vi with the Lockdown, really, really good champion to play in the jungle. Very beginner friendly as well. Obviously, Lockdown with Assault and Battery. The jungle clears really, really fast as well. And she can stay really, really healthy uh, through the jungle. Jarvan got a few nerfs. Obviously, base AD and the first ability. So he's not going to be able to clear the jungle jungle as quickly as before but his cataclysm is still one of the most you know one of the strongest ultimates in the game being able to lock champions in place if they don't have a flash or a dash or anything like that but still can offer really you know so so much in the game obviously flag and drag as well easily um is quite easy to gank lanes Xin Zhao as well still really really good not as strong as before obviously got a buff in patch uh i I believe it was patch 2.6. I can't remember if it was patch 2.6 or patch 2.6a, but he did get buffed to his health, and I believe it was his armor as well. So it allows him to stay, you know, a bit healthy during a laning phase, but a while ago, he did get his damage numbers nerfed. So he doesn't clear the jungle as well as others, but he's still quite strong. Jax is up there as well. With Jax, you kind of just want to farm as much as you can during the early game. And then when you get to the late game, you just become this late game beast. So you can split push and you can clear the jungle really, really fast. So you just get a lot of gold income playing Jax in the jungle. 
Pantheon can still work quite well in the jungle. Doesn't have the fastest jungle clear. But again, as mentioned before, with the top lane, the Grand Skyfall, still really, really strong to be able to gank lanes really, really easily. And as a point and point and touch, I mean point and tap stun, I guess you could say. I would say point and clip, but we're not playing PC Lee. Uh, a point and tap stun, which is really, really strong. Uh, Graves in the jungle as well, even after Nurse is still quite good as well. Uh, you, can definitely, you can definitely do a lot of damage. Um, you could definitely, you know, dash a lot of the time as well, but he's not as strong as before, obviously because of the nurse. Uh, Trendemir struggles a little bit in the jungle, but it can still work. He can make some cheeky plays as well, like dashing over the dragon pit, trying to take a sneaky dragon um, if the enemy team doesn't have any vision. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, nothing really going for Trendemir at the moment. And Dr. Mundo as well. Obviously, because of the changes, because of his mini rework that he got, he's not as strong in the jungle as he was before. He kind of struggles a little bit because he doesn't do as much monster damage as he did before as well. Um, since the changes are not really suited really for the jungle mundo. But it can still work. You know, you can still farm pretty quickly. Especially because the second ability does AoE damage as well. So your jungle clear is okay. Third ability is kind of useless now. It doesn't give you extra AD like it did before. But you can still farm. You can still be a tank with Dr. Mundo. And you can still be pretty much a big nuisance. And Wukong as well is still down here. Still pretty safe jungler to play. Still one of the easiest junglers to play in the game for sure. Um, but he doesn't really fit in the jungle anymore because they've, you know, they've done so many nerfs to him. He doesn't heal as much with his first ability. His clone doesn't do as much damage to monsters now anymore. And there was loads of nerfs that they did to Wukong jungle. They tried to move Wukong um, into the top lane instead of the jungle. And then for the beats here, you know, you got Ramis down here. Still quite an annoying champion to play, but it doesn't really have a lot of carry potential. Master Yi just struggles a lot, unfortunately. Um, he can't really do that much. You know, if you can get head and if you scale into late game, maybe with a Lulu or something like that, could be really, really strong. Shivana just completely sucks at the moment, unfortunately. Uh, probably one of the worst stronglers in the game right now. Um, if you can get dragons, she can be strong, but it's so hard to get ahead, you know, after the nurse she received a long, long time ago when she was really, really strong. And obviously with all these new junglers that have come um, into the game now, you know, like Karzix, like Nunu, like Jace, you know, all these junglers that are coming into play that just do well, you know, because Shivana early on has a really, really bad early game, probably one of the weakest early games of all the junglers. So she can't really contest Skull Crab, so all she can really do is just do a full jungle clear, but then you'll be really behind on levels. And you will get, you can get invaded quite easily as well. With Shivana, you don't have the best one versus one potential in the uh, in the late game. And then the Mumu as the last champion, I'm not too sure where Mumu's going to fit. To be fair, because of the buffs that he got, um, he could move up into A or even A plus T. I've left him in B at the moment, but it definitely can change. Obviously, Mumu did get kind of changed in patch uh, patch 2.6, which kind of benefited him in the support role, but didn't really b benefit him in the jungle because all of his Damage numbers got nerfed, but he also got the um, second charge on his first ability. But now with patch 2.6a, the health has been increased. Um, and also some other numbers have been increased as well. I think the recharge, uh, recharge time of the first ability and also the base damage as well have been increased. So hopefully that will do him well. Give me two seconds. Take a sip of the drink as I keep on talking. Move on to the mid lane. Three, these three champions are by far the best mid lane champions at the moment. Uh, I don't think anyone could really disagree with that. Jace, in just insanely strong at the moment, didn't get touched again into uh, patch 2.6a, as I mentioned. Dina just has great team fight potential. Her damage output is absolutely disgusting. Even after Rod of Ages nerfed, you know, she can still scale and she can still become that late game beast. And obviously, with her auto attacks as well and with, um, you know, with the Nash's Tooth as well, doing more damage with that, it's still really, really strong. And Zed, you know, it just this champion is just still completely busted. Can't really, you know, can't really do much against Zed. Can play really, really passive. And also in the late game as well, he could just use his ultimate. Use all his abilities as well and do so much damage with all the armor penetration items that are in the game. And also slow enemies as well with the Serrated's Grudge. So just a really, really hard champion to deal with. And definitely one of the best up there at the moment. I really, I really as I mentioned before, a very, very high skill cap. But very, very strong overall. Still can do really, really well against uh, some champions. But again, the outplay potential is there but it is you know really really hard to play the champions so you got a bit of a um bit of a skill cap with uh iradio there but still up there is one of the best for sure twist twisted fate obviously got quite a big nerf in patch 
Definitely dropped him down quite a lot, but then he got a buff again in patch 2.6a, which lowered the cooldown of his second ability now, which is quite nice. So he's definitely up there still as one of the best. You know, his ultimate destiny can still do really, really well, and you could try and get your side lanes ahead as well, which is quite nice. Ziggs as well. Ziggs with his bombs. Oh my god, this champion. Every single game I have with Ziggs or against Ziggs or even the casting that I did with the Purge tournament, Ziggs always had the most damage. I mean, even after Nurse, his champion is still completely busted, in my opinion. Uh, probably not as much carry potential as the champions above. I think the champions above just have a lot more carry potential. But Ziggs is still really, really strong. You can just play passive, use your bombs, clear mid lane. And just play safe and you can use the Mega Inferno Bomb and all your bombs during the team fights to just do the most damage in the game. And obviously, you scale, you know, one of the best scaling mid laners in the whole game. Uh, speaking of scaling, Vega obviously did get a buff as well. I um, believe it was the ultimate and the second ability got buffed. I can't remember exactly, but Vega is quite strong at the moment. Uh, the wave clear again from Vega is still really, uh, still quite strong. The same with Ziggs as well. The event horizon is probably the most important ability with Vega. His third ability, being able to zone the enemies off guard and also try and trap the enemies as well in place, so your team can follow up as well as well as yourself. You know, with the primordial burst, this ultimate as well, being able to execute enemies. Um, but yeah, overall, just a really, really strong champion, especially during them dragon fights as well. If you use the event horizon in the correct place at the correct time, you can definitely carry games. Galio still does really, really well. Um, does really well against AP champions in the mid lane because obviously he has that AP shield from his second ability. Um, can still benefit a lot during the team fights as well. You can st uh, still help your team with the ultimate as well. And he still does a lot of damage as well, you know, with the taunt, if you can land it, you know, with the first ability and with the knock up as well, with the passive um, punch that he does he deal, he does definitely still do a lot of damage. Yasuo is still up there as well. I think this champion will always be, always be strong because of the Solari Charge Blade, allowing Yasuo to get... Pretty sure it's 100% crit chance he gets um, when he uses uses an ability uh, with Solari Charge Blade. Because if you don't know, Yasuo, every single time you buy crit, the crit gets doubled. So I believe it goes up to... It might go up to 75% with one item. I could be wrong. I don't know if it's 75 or 100% with Solari Charge Blade. But yeah, absolutely disgusting what Yasuo can do with Solari Charge Blade. And will still be really, really strong until Solari Charge Blade maybe gets nerfed or maybe the champion gets nerfed. Um, Ari's a bit of an interesting one. I don't think the champion is as strong as the other champions in the S tier, but I still feel like she has a lot of carry potential. She's quite easy to play as well. Her charm is one of the strongest abilities in the game as well. And if you can use that and if you can play safe with her ultimate as well and try and catch out an enemy off guard, you can definitely carry a lot of team fights. Uh, there's a player in Team Dark called One Mid who's really strong on Ari. Lands multiple charms and can carry his team really, really well. So, shout out to him. And, you know, Ari can still work. It doesn't do as much damage and isn't as strong as other mid laners. But she still can work. And she can still be up there. Moving on to A plus tier. This is going to be a long one. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> this will be very, very long. We still got ADC and support to go as well. Which is my two ones that I probably talk about the most. Um, moving on to A plus. Oriana is still really, really strong. Going for the um, Archangel Staff and obviously Ludens Echo, being able to scale a lot into the late game. If you can land the Shockwave, if you can land the, your abilities with your balls, you can do a lot of damage, pun intended. Um, Akali, again, the same as top lane. You know, it's starting to come back into the meta, but again, her laning phase is uh, quite weak and she definitely does struggle against the champions that are above her. Same with Katarina as well, laning phase, she does struggle a lot. And because there's so much crowd control and because there's now kind of you know it's it's really really hard because when you see a katarina on the enemy team you know all you have to do is pick galio uh pick alistar pick wukong pick anyone with knockups and katarina can't play the game at all uh lucian i still think is quite strong in the mid lane uh one of the best ad champion ad carries in the mid lane as well uh with obviously corky there as well i feel like lucian is now better than corky um just the build that you could do with lucian with all the damage that you can do with two items infinity edge and slurry charge blade is really really strong riven has a few decent matchups in mid lane as well can struggle against the ap champions early on as a melee champion but because she has a shield available. She has a lot of dashes as well. And because of all the strong items in the game, like Black Cleaver, like Death Stance, like Sterix Gage, she can still be really, really strong. Akshan got nerfed uh, in this patch. The base damage got nerfed. Uh, and also, I think the first ability got nerfed as well, the base damage. So, he's not going to be as strong as before, but I still feel like he's going to be um, quite okay, to be fair. The passive being able to revive teammates is really, really strong. So, it'd be quite nice. Uh, Kale, again, 
haven't really tested her too much since the update since you um since she got changed so i left her in a plus tier for now i moved her down from um s tier because her early game is going to be a really really big struggle now and i feel like she um you know enemy you know enemies can punish um kale quite a lot now so we'll have to see how that one works but she can still scale into late game really really well you just have to play very very safe um corky as well there can still work in the mid lane you don't really see him that much in the mid lane anymore as you know assassins like zed like diana um, even like Jace as well could do really, really well against Corky. So he's not as high as before, but he's still there. He's still quite strong. Morgana as well uh, could do quite well in the mid lane. Uh, the wave clear on Morgana mid lane is really, really strong. If you go for like a Ludens Echo, Death Cap sort of full AP build, you can clear the mid, mid wave really, really easily. You can use that time to roam around, try and land your Dark Bindings, try and get your ultimate to impact the team fight as well. And obviously because Zonya's stasis is so, so cheap as well, you can use that um, to be able to... Um, Easily, I would say, um, carry the team fires, but you have to be careful to make sure the enemy team doesn't have flash. Uh, Fizz got nerfed, um, has moved and moved him down to A tier. I feel like Fizz is, you know, I'm so quite surprised that Fizz actually got nerfed. I didn't feel like Fizz was very, very strong. Uh, maybe the ultimate was up a bit more than, you know, than maybe expected. Um, if you just use stasis or if you just buy stasis against Fizz, um, most of his damage can go. But I think it's just because of all the mobility that Fizz has, um, especially the third ability, being able to become untargetable is quite strong. So maybe just reducing the ultimate um, cooldown, just not allowing Fizz to be able to easily one-shot enemies. Um, but I've put him down to A tier for now. Renekton doesn't do as strong in mid lane at the, uh, at the moment as he did before. Um, again, as I previously mentioned, because of these um, you know, these strong duelists coming in in the mid lane and also the top lane as well, Renekton has definitely fallen under. And obviously, because of the nerf, it's pretty hard. Aurelian Soul um, can't really do that much at the moment, I feel like. Again, against Assassins, Aurelian Soul and these control mages definitely suffer. Um, and I'll talk about control mages in the B tier as well. Um, and even with Brand as well, you know, another control mage. These assassins that are in the game at the moment. These champions could all do all these damage. Like Zed, Diana, Jace, Irelia, Yasuo, Ari. All these champions could just jump onto control mages. And that's why control mages in general are really, really struggling. That's why these AD champions you're seeing a lot in the top side of the map um do uh do really really well you know in the top lane and also the mid lane so Aurelian soul not in the best of spots at the moment but you can roam you can still use um his first ability to try and get a stun but the stun doesn't last too too long of a time and the damage output of Aurelian soul is not there at the moment so probably needs a few buffs to get um improved right in mid lane as well i don't feel i don't know if i've kind of underrated brand a little bit i feel like maybe he could definitely go up to a plus but looking at all the a plus champions i don't think Brand is better than any of them or the same level as any of them. I definitely feel like he's a bit on the weak side at the moment. You see him played a little bit in the duo lane and also support role. You can play in mid lane as well. But again, as I said, control majors are struggling. Uh, and the same with this as well. I don't know if anyone's CRT, do, do I? Nope. Um, and again, as I mentioned, control majors, Seraphine, Lux, and Annie as well. Um, all of these champions really, really struggle. They're all control majors, but they all still have their benefits. You know, Annie can still do quite well with her tippers and land that multi-man stun. Again, with Lux, you can land a binding and pretty much one-shot someone with your ultimate. And also Seraphine as well with her charm. She can still do really, really well um, but at the moment. Like I said, control majors are struggling and it'll be quite hard to uh, scale into the late game. Uh, moving on to ADC. I haven't changed much about ADC, to be fair. Um, <clears throat> Varus and Lucian still top. Uh, if, you've looked at, if you've seen my tier list before, you'll see that this is pretty much the same as before. There's a few changes that I was thinking of making, but I didn't make in the end. Um, Varus and Lucian still S plus tier, in my opinion. Varus, just the poke that he offers and everything is just so, so strong. And with you know, Edge of Knight in the game now as well as another defensive tool for Varus. Hard, really, really hard for enemy champions to dive on top of him. And Lucian as well, one of the best AD carries in the moment with his build and with his damage output. Moving down to S, Ezreal's still really, really strong as well with all of his poke and how safe he can be. And Corky as well being very, very safe scaling into late game. Zaya did get a nerf um, in patch 2.6, but I've left Zaya down there for now as I feel so, still feel like Zaya is definitely one of the best at the moment. Caitlyn's still up there as well. Very safe AD carry to play. Does a lot of poke, a lot of damage, and can definitely do really, really well, especially if you stay back during team fights. Now, Kaisa. Kaisa got buffed in patch 2.68. I didn't move her up to S plus tier, but she could very well be up in the S plus tier. I don't know if she's going to be... I've tested her out a little bit. She definitely does feel stronger, but I don't know if she's going to be as on the same level as Varus and Lucian. I'll have to probably test her out a little bit more because uh, obviously the patch has only been out for a few days, but 
She is really, really, really strong now. She is a lot stronger than what she was before. She's probably the best S-tier champion now out of all of these. Um, but, you know, champions like Zyra and Caitlyn can still do uh, really, really well. And same with Ezreal and Corky if they scale into late game. Uh, Vayne and Draven are still down in the A-plus tier. Uh, both these champions are really, really strong, but they definitely have a high skill cap. Uh, Vayne obviously struggles really, really hard in the early game, but can carry pretty much 1v9 games in the late game, as you've probably seen in one of my videos. Uh, but at the moment, she is uh, currently struggling down in the A-plus tier. Draven as well, one of the strongest, if not the strongest, early game champions, but you need to get ahead early game with Draven. You need to get kills early on with his passive to be able to, be able to get a lot of gold and to be able to get... A bit more gold than the enemy AD carry because of the axes that he offers. Um, he can, you know, go out of position at times because he needs to catch his axes to do as much damage as possible. Uh, Jinx is obviously obviously a, uh, a weaker version of Vayne at the moment. You don't see Jinx at all at the moment. Um, just quite weak. You know, doesn't really offer too much. In a late game, she can be quite good, but she doesn't do near enough as much damage as Vayne, obviously, with Solari Charge Blade. Because Jinx doesn't use Solari Charge Blade at all, really. Um, same with Tristana as well. Again, a user that doesn't really use Solari Charge Blade that well. Quite hard to play, and her damage output is just not there compared to the other AD carries as well. Miss Fortune, I'm not too sure if she's A or A+, plus, to be fair. I definitely feel like Miss Fortune is very, very strong, but I'm not too sure if she's strong enough to move up in the tier list. I have to still test her out again, probably, but... You know, with, uh, you know, at the moment with champions that can dive onto you so easily, like Zed, like Diana, like Jace like Riven, like Fiora, like Camille, you know, all these champions that I mentioned already in the Baron uh, jungle and mid lane, you know, it's really, really hard for um, Miss Fortune to use her ultimate and obviously being able to um, do as much damage as possible. She doesn't really do well against bruises and tanks as well at the same time. Uh, Jin is still, unfortunately, one of the worst AD carries at the moment, in my opinion. Um, just doesn't do enough damage at all. Can offer a lot in, in terms of utility with his ultimate curtain call and with the second ability to be able to root. But other than that, doesn't really have a lot of damage output. Can be, um, can struggle a lot in the laning phase as well. Um, and can be punished really, really easily as well. Um, especially when the fourth shot is, um, is shot. Because obviously then he's reloading and he doesn't really have any opportunity um, again with Ash, uh, I don't know, NA love Ash, uh, but I don't like Ash and I don't think a lot of members in EU, I mean, I, I say that, I think some people in EU do like Ash, um, maybe I've under put her a little bit, I actually think Ash should maybe be A, um, thinking about it now, just pretend that Ash is up in A, just pretend Ash is here, um, I, I feel like her damage output is not there yet at the moment, but she def definitely does offer a lot in terms of utility and a lot of slows, and especially her ultimate as well can be really, really impactful. But the problem is, is that in solo queue and even in duo queue as well, it's hard to communicate your ultimate at times. Um, hard to communicate, you know, how you can utilize the slows and how you can position uh, Ash as well in team fights is obviously really, really important. Um, in solo queue, she doesn't have the carry potential as other AD carries, you know. If you compare Ash to someone like Zaya, Caitlyn, Kaisa, Lucian, Varus. All these champions just do a lot more damage and they have a lot more carry potential. Ash is normally there for utility, for slows, and for a stun as well. Um, so yeah, unfortunately, not the best AD carry, but I probably should move up to A tier. I think B tier is, is very, very harsh for Ash. Um, Z Senna in the B tier as well. Again, don't play Senna as an AD carry. Don't play farming Senna. If you're going to play a uh, center in the bot lane, player as a support or player as fasting center. Fasting center is when center is paired with a tank like Galio, Garen, Raga, someone like that, but you're not taking the farm. Instead, the tank is taking farm and they're there to basically be a meat shield for you. So you can keep stacking up your stalls as much as possible and keep gaining that range and the damage as well. Obviously, center did get nerfed in patch 2.6a. Um, so yeah, I don't think she's going to be as strong as before, but. I still think she'll be okay. And Akshan, I've never liked him in the ADC role. Obviously, with the nerfs as well, it's definitely going to be a lot more of a struggle. But I, I've still never liked him. I definitely think he is a better mid laner, even Baron laner, than a um, than an AD carry. Uh, wow, we're at 30 minutes already. Holy moly. Um... I quickly go through the support tiers as quick uh, tier list as quick as I can. Uh, this hasn't actually updated. I actually moved Rakan into the uh, the S tier. I don't know why this hasn't updated. Uh, let me quickly refresh and see if it updates. There you go. It's updating now. Um, Nami and Lulu still up there as two of the best supports. The Enchanter supports with all the healing and shielding they offer is still really, really strong. Another new support I put up there is Thresh. Now, Thresh is in insane. You know, Thresh is one of the best um, 
solo queue carry champions that you can play in a support role um, offers a lot of defensive abilities and also offensive abilities as well to engage and disengage has a lantern to save your teammates and also has the carry potential with the hook with the flay as well and with all the tank items that are in the game like dead man's plate life force nature to give him the extra movement speed i know souls you know doing so much as well and i feel like his auto attacks also do a lot of damage as well compared to pc league of legends this champion is definitely up there as one of the best uh, moving on to s um, nothing's really changed for S. I have moved Galio up to S tier. I feel like Galio's support is definitely a bit underrated. You can do a lot of damage and you can also be a, a pretty much a meat shield and a tank as well for your team. Brom's still really, really strong with his passive, being one of the best passives in the entire game. Being able to stun enemies obviously does really, really well with Lucian as well. Has a lot of peeling with Stand Behind Me with the shield as well and also his ultimate. Janna again with her peeling is still really, really strong. Her shield actually does so much. Um, me and Keys were playing um he shoot he was playing um janna down the bot lane and support role and i was playing champions like kaiser and lucian and the amount of bonus ad that janna gives with her shield is really underrated i feel like it's really really strong and obviously with janna has a lot of peening as well with her tornado with her ultimate as well monsoon which is really really strong morgana as well uh, still really, really strong being able to uh, black shield your AD carry to stop any crowd control coming in. And obviously block a lot of AP damage as well, which is quite nice. And also being able to use that dark binding and use the ultimate to try and pick off people in lane as well is quite nice. Talked about Galio already. Rakan as well. I was tempted to move Rakan up into the S plus tier, but I didn't move him down to the S tier. He's definitely on the borderline of S plus and S for sure. Um, a lot of mobility, a lot of engage, a lot of disengage, a lot of ways you could build Rakan as well, whatever suits you. Tank, 4 AP, a mixture of both. Um, more of an enchanter Rakan as well with Ardent Sensor with Summon Airy if you want to go that route as well. Um, yeah, definitely up there as one of the best. Amumu, I think the buff has definitely helped him a lot in the support role. I have to definitely give him a try again and try out Amumu in the support role. We'll have to see how things go with that. But the health increase, the recharge on the first ability as well is just really, really powerful. Uh, Leona as well, the lockdown that she offers is really, really strong. I definitely feel like Leona could move up into the S tier. I think like... The owner's kind of on the borderline of A plus and S S tier, and obviously Rakan's on the borderline of uh, S plus and S tier. But the lockdown that Leona offers is really, really nice. She's super, super tanky as well. Um, one of the best champions again to solo carry with. The only problem is, is that her team fights can be good, but she's definitely a lot better at pick potential. She's good at picking people off one by one. So in the big massive five versus five team fights, unless you can land like a multi man solar solar flare, then she's not really that useful. She's kind of like a meat shield, really. Um, Senna obviously got nerfed, but it's still quite strong um, in the support role. She definitely doesn't offer as much as the other um, other supports in terms of crowd control, in terms of um, you know shielding or healing. She definitely doesn't offer as much, but she don't. She can definitely scale. She can be a carry uh, support in the late game as well. Um, so she can still be pretty good. Alistar's still up there as well. Um, Alistar does struggle a lot against some of the enchanter supports and champions like Thresh and Rakan. He could definitely struggle as well because it's hard to kind of you know, catch these champions off guard. Um, but with Alistar, you can definitely um, yourself catch a lot of champions off guard uh, with the headbutt pulverize and with that, the proto belt as well. Uh, I've got to try and finish this all in three minutes. Um, <laughs> Seraphine, Sona, and Lux, um, these were enchanter supports, but unfortunately then, you know, nowhere near as good as Janna, Nami, Lulu, or even Senna. Um, Seraphine can still do quite well. Obviously has her ultimate to be able to get... Um, Get five man ultimate. You can try and build her AP and support role if you want to, but most of the time, um, it is the uh, support role that you want to do. Sonar obviously struggles a lot in the early game, but if you can get, if you can get into late game with Sonar, uh, she's definitely one of the best scaling supports in the game. A lot of shielding, a lot of healing, a lot of damage as well, um, because she could she could basically just spam abilities all the time with Ceres Embrace. Um, Lux definitely not up there as one of the best anymore. Unfortunately, uh, Lux has definitely gone. Downhill, um, since she got nerfed and since other supports have come into the meta as well. Um, and she can't really do much anymore, unfortunately. Uh, same with Brand as well. Uh, unfortunately, is going down and down the tier list. Can do okay, to be fair. You can try and go for like a carry Brand support role, but I wouldn't really recommend it, to be fair. I mean, you don't really have any other items to build anyway, so you have to build carry items. But, you know, other than that, doesn't really offer too much. You know, can do a lot of damage, can offer you a lot of, a lot of utility as well with Rylai's, but other than that, not really too good. And the last two champions are Soraka and Blitzcrank. 
Obviously, Soraka uh, got a buff in patch 2.6, but nothing too crazy. Um, so she's still down there. She just got a little heal buff, but pretty much gets countered by one item. Executioner's Calling, Oblivion Orb, Bramble Vest. If you build one of them, the heals become basically useless and get reduced. Uh, same Blitzcrank as well. Again, if you can't land a hook on this champion, just don't play him. It's as simple as that. And with that... That's the end of the tier list. A bit different to usual. Um, I didn't do just AD carry and support. As you can see here, all the roles of all the champions. Um, if you want to check out this website, I will leave a link down in the description. As I mentioned, I do work on this website quite a lot. All the builds, all the guides, everything is done by myself. All the written guides and all, you know, everything is all done by myself. So I put quite a lot of effort into this. So I appreciate all the support on here as well. Um, and yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this in-depth look at this tier. It's obviously quite a long video, 40 minutes long. Um, as I mentioned, I wanted to do you know something a bit different. You know, try and get go out of my comfort zone a little bit and explain to you more about Baron Lane Jungle and Mid Lane as well at the same time. And you know, with me doing casting, I kind of felt like this is a good opportunity as well. And kind of you know, so you you can all get my point of view with other roles as well, not just AD carry and support. But yeah, appreciate you all tuning into it, the video again. If you like the video make sure you like comment and subscribe i will see you all very very soon uh, for more wild rift content and as always take care and have a good christmas and i'll see you all very soon peace